Yeah, so I'm switching to that Ascend investment. Also, um, you should probably save up Ascend investments if you want to make the Kalidor's Tempest, Kalidor's Regalia set. Because you can use any level of Ascend investment for that, and uh, it'll work. In today's video, we're going to be doing some side questing. And I'm going to do three right around Burwich Village. Or at least attempt to do three right around Burwich Village. The first one is uh, going to kill a unique spawn by the name of Gutworm. And in the Pine Barrens videos, we fought his kind of older brother, you know, sprite color change by the name of Bloodfeast. And, uh, yeah, this'll, this'll be fun. I mean, that's probably a lie, but I can pretend it'll be fun. <laughs> so, Gutworm can spawn in one of three places, and I'm not going to go to all three places if he just shows up at his first location, uh, which he did not. Um... Yeah, Gutworm is... He's sort of a noob killer, and I love him for it. Because when you're first playing the game and you're exploring around, you'll probably, you know, stumble upon his cave. And then you'll be like, oh, this big guy's here. I'm gonna fight it. And he just totally trashes you. So, uh, yeah, I like him for that. But, uh... Spawn point number two is this wall, I believe... Is he a little further up? See, they kind of changed around. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I don't think we got him. Okay, I guess we're going to all three locations. They kind of changed around um, Burwich a little bit. Yeah, speaking of Grim Dawn, I swear you better not do that to me this time. The game has actually not been that crashy since the 1.0.0.2 up update, so... Um, anyways, they, they kind of changed around Burwich a little bit. Um, and it does throw me off a tiny, tiny bit. So I believe his cave is right here, yeah. So this is his third location. Um, Smuggler's Basin. So yeah, we fought Bloodfeast, who is kind of like... Gutworm's older brother. Basically a sprite swap character. And, uh... Very early on, he's not that difficult to beat. You get an ancient heart out of it. And then he has a supreme chest. So yeah, Gutworm, you can kind of turn him into a bit of a farming place as well. A bit of one. He's not... If, like, if he's not at his first location, it suddenly becomes very unreliable to do it. But, uh... Yeah, you can actually you can actually do a tiny bit of farming against him. I believe he has a blue item that can sometimes drop off him more regularly than it does randomly. Um... What are these guys at? 17. Yeah, I'll just run on through. So, uh, you may have noticed that no Aether Crystal popped out of that Aether Crystal because I am very overleveled for Burwich, which means that uh, not only do you not earn experience off of... I just defended you, Grim Dawn, as to being not as crashy in this build, and we just got two lockups in one session. So, uh, yeah, if... If you're very overleveled for an area, not only do you not earn experience, but also things like like Aether Crystals and Ancient Hearts won't drop. So you run around um, that bridge there, and you'll, you'll come to uh, the River Passage, which will be filled with Sloth. <laughs> and we're going to Hallowed Hill. Which is one of my favorite areas in the game. But as soon as you get the one-time chest, there's no reason to come here anymore. Um, oh, come on. Uh, 
And we're a bit overleveled for these guys, but I think the hill will actually be... Well, no, it's probably going to be level 30, now that I think about it, because we're normal slash veteran. I'm going to go grab that scrap. Scrap will still drop if you're overleveled, I believe. But it's like the rare crafting mats won't. Um, normal aether crystals and things like those. So Hallowed Hill is basically a giant donut area. Yeah, we're we're kind of at level here. And uh, this is like one of the first, first true like farming places in the game. And I kind of wish it were an ultimate still because. While it, in Ultimate you are, like it does stay at level, it does it does have a high level cap, it it's, goes all the way up to like 90 or whatever the end game level cap is, um, but the problem is there's nothing here, there's no like rare monster, um, there's no like exceptional amount of chests or anything, it's, it's just, there's an exalted stash, it's a one time chest, um, and once you grab it, you pretty much never have to come here again. I mean, I'm going to go explore around. I mean, occasionally you will get, like, ethereal mobs dropping, you know, spawning. But, um... But otherwise, it's, uh... It's just ethereals. It's basically... Basically what you can get out of the Warden's area... But less, because it doesn't end with a boss fight. I mean, hell, I even used to use this place to level up, because you would get a crap ton of experience around level 35 when you were up here. Now you don't even get a lot of experience for doing this place. <laughs> So yeah, it's a little it's a little sad to me that Hallowed Hill's not like a a more interesting or better location to do things at. I think there's a treasure trove up here sometimes though. So it might be a semi reliable place to get a treasure trove. I mean with the way treasure troves work now, where you have rare crafting mats popping out of them, I mean it might be worth doing it now. Because, like, it can pop up. It's, I think the only place I've ever seen it is right here. And obviously we don't have one here. Because we got that ornate strong box. Um, I'm going to look over here just to make sure. Nope, no treasure trove. I mean, it may just be, like, I'm already feeling some nostalgia for the early access days of Grim Dawn. But, uh, yeah, no, no treasure trove. So, um, yeah, I, I do really like Howard Hill. And like I said, it's a big donut of an area. It's a fun secret area. I just wish there was something there. I think both Sino and I agree that having, like, a... A, a rare mob there that drops an infrequent would be really awesome. Make it ethereal, please. Um, <laughs> hey, I'm not saying they should put a cold aether guy up there, but maybe they should put a cold aether guy up there. That'd be really interesting. Alright, our next area. You go east of the waypoint, and you'll end up in East Marsh. You have to clear rubble with dynamite and fix the bridge with scrap. But this area has two unique spawns. One of which we're going to go... Technically three, if you're if you're well into your Order of Death's Vigil quest, you'll be sent out here. Um, and there's going to be another unique spawn for that, but it's not out here yet. Um, what Order of Death's Vigil quest am I on? Gather the Ashes? Oh, the... I totally forgot I can turn the seals in. I said I'd do that off camera because I already did the ethereal area. Whoops. Yep, 
Yeah, so we're pretty much just going to run east from where we enter, and you'll eventually come to this uh, troll gate barricade thing. And um, if you head a little more east of that, you'll you'll obviously encounter a lot of trolls. <laughs> you'll encounter this guy, um, Belgor the Swamp King, who is very very poisony. He's pretty much like the the trolls we fought before. Um, but he's very, very poisony. I like that trolls are like these big tough guys and their thing is poison. It's a really interesting, really interesting thing that you don't usually see in some games. Now, if you don't have the Mistborn Talisman, um, I believe he drops the blueprint for it quite commonly. If you don't have it yet. I seem to remember getting it a lot off of him. Whenever I'd come out here. Um, I actually really like this area. Because it... It, it is sort of the Whitemire template. Um, but, you know, different-y. It's like the Whitemire template, but with, with enemies you don't see in Whitemire. I like it. So, uh, yeah, we're just, you just basically run sort of east and a little south, and you'll eventually come to, like, this, the corner, lower corner of the map, and then you can start moving up. Um, and you'll, you'll encounter, you know, bugs, they're gonna be those, um, rift town things, and obviously the trolls slash, like, Mistborn guys. And then you'll fight Grobbles, the uh, Death Clan Grobbles, who will be red. They're the red uh, color swaps. And then, um, we're, we're basically still heading east. Uh, there are a couple bridges over here. Yeah, Drangul, pretty standard mix of gravel stuff. Um. And you can go in the center of the areas up here. It's, it's more gravel camps. <laughs> uh. Yeah, we're we're still in our constant let's head east mode. Uh, I'm gonna drop a portal because I don't want to die up here and have to walk all the way back. And you come to this area in the upper, like the north, the northeast corner. And this is where the uh, the bone hunter is. Kalis Ka, the bone hunter. That sounds so much like something out of. Um, like John Carter of Mars, that sounds exactly like a name you'd see in that book. Kaliska. He is a heavy bleed enemy, and he has the Fang of the Bone Hunter, which is what we were looking for. And I'm gonna grab up all the crap that popped out of his spoils orb. Still trying to get that nice, like, flat core of iron on this character. So we need a chipped claw. Pretty easy. So that's the other notable thing out here is a Devotion Shrine. Um, it's a Devotion Shrine, those two rare spawns. And then one of your Order of Death's Vigil quests sends you back out here. And there's going to be another rare spawn. Um, which I'll save for that actual video, mentioning what it is and what it does. But I will say, I did read a bunch of the... A bunch of the lore... 
in the game. And, uh... I think Uro Baruch is my favorite character in all the backstory. And Sino and I are planning on doing a lore video where we actually sit and talk about this. But, um... Long story short, Uro Baruch was a necromancer back in old Arcavia, but it was not old Arcavia, just normal Arcavia. And, uh... He was... He was imprisoned, and because he's immortal, <laughs> he was tortured in a way only an immortal can be tortured at, by the Arcavians to give up his secrets of necromancy to them. And then he ends up, like... Giving them the, the like, wrong secrets, so to speak. And he, uh... <laughs> he's pretty much the cause for old Arcavia's downfall. I actually don't remember what I was going to do with this guy's devotion. <laughs> but, uh, I think we're gonna... We're gonna do the Wraith and... And the Widow. And then move on to the defensive stuff. So anyways, um, thanks for watching this video, everyone. This is kind of some of the secrets in Act 1. And I'm going to point out that I do have a Secrets of Act 1 video that covers all of the secrets in this, in Act 1. Well, we'll say 99% of the secrets in Act 1. So you should go, you should go check that out um, if you want to see more of what, what can be found in here. But, uh, but anyways, thanks for watching, everyone. And I'll see you guys next time where we're going to go in and probably do more side quests throughout the game that we're capable of doing now.